Hello and welcome back and that's right today we're returning to the subject of Unify Protect and more importantly we're going to talk about that new Unify Protect 5.0.20 or technically 21 update that has arrived for their surveillance platform. Now it has brought a number of things to the table. Let's face it it's you know done some optimizations there with the storage backend. It's added Dropbox cloud remote act, uh, support and backup there. A few little configuration tweaks and storage optimization there in the background but realistically the main thing that everyone did interested in is this the support of third-party cameras via OnVir, the universal protocol that allows you to take advantage of non-unified cameras in your Unify Protect setup there. And we've already talked about this in a video about a week ago, give or take. And in this video, we've been testing a bunch of cameras. Now, we've got cameras here from D-Link, from Anker, from Rio Link, and even a kind of camera I found here from VZoom that I found in a drawer. More on that one later on. And we wanted to test this exactly what extent OnVir is being supported and before we go any further i will say this video is mostly good news it's not going to be completely good news and some of you who are thinking of upgrading your system to that unify protect 5.0 20 um there's a few things about this you might want to know if you've already got existing cameras in your setup because although onviv support has definitely 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 been added it is not equal among cameras i would say and there's a few of you that may be deploying cameras in an existing environment who could stand to check a few things but i'll say straight away of all the brands that i tested here and these are all quite budget on viv brands here we got none of the access none of the big top end stuff i'll say pretty much all of the rio link cameras i used were visible now visible is the key word there we were able to attach multiple rio link cameras to our existing unify system the unify protect system found the cameras in a local area environment as i added cameras one by one the cameras would appear and just like a unify camera the unify protect system invited me to adopt the camera into my surveillance setup there it's very easy i entered the locking credentials for the camera that i would have created they are either the default credentials that are generally found on the base of the camera or the ones that i personally created during reviews in the past and then the camera was added great news right well, mostly good news, because there were certainly some elements of this that I would argue are on the side of OnVid Canvas you have to play with, and a few things that I think Unify are going to have to knuckle down and really optimise out. Number one, the smooth feeds I was getting from the OnVid cameras was completely overshadowed by the existing uh, Unify cameras that I was utilising, an AI Pro and a Flex that I had set up in the same surveillance environment and the feeds I was getting from those was absolutely brilliant. Whereas the OnViv optimization, a few of the cameras were prone to blackout and freezing and general stuttering, not the really anywhere near the smooth quality I was getting from the in-house um, Unify cameras there. Now, They've already made it abundantly clear this is just being rolled out, rolled out, and it is something they are working on with optimization. So I'm not really going to be too critical about this at this very early stage of the update. Equally, I do think there are going to be users that are certainly going to love the idea of taking advantage of the Unify Integrated Protect Surveillance System and not have to use camera licenses to start adding more cameras. It's been one of the banes of the existence of NAS brands. Synology are a great example of that. They've got a premier surveillance platform in surveillance station but when you use their platforms you're going to get two camera licenses with the bulk of their systems and if you want to you take, uh, take advantage of third party on viv cameras you need to get additional camera licenses which retail for about 30 to 50 quid a pop depending on whether you get the bulk packs and that's using any of the third party cameras and that's something that unify and protect in this latest update aren't including all third party on viv cameras that you add will not require an additional subscription and can be directly bolted onto your existing unify protect system however what about some of those things that are little bumps on the road right Adding third-party camera support is incredibly straightforward. Once you've updated to the latest revision of that software, you simply go into the settings menu and click the option to enable third-party camera integration and support. It is a beta labs option. As you can see, this is still very much beta. So again, we're not going to hit them too hard with a stick on this, but it does mean that after that point, refresh your page. Some users have actually restarted their system and third-party cameras have appeared for adoption within um, Unified Protect there. But keep in mind, and this is something I discovered the hard way, that some cameras, by default, disable 
on VIP. So, so for example, you have been taken advantage of this one. This is a, a D-Link camera here. It's a DLS. This camera has on VIP disabled and RTSP disabled by default. It relies on you utilizing the D-Link software. So you have to make your way in to enable those features. And that was very much the case with other cameras I utilized there. So if you're going to enable pre-existing cameras in your no local area environment for your Unified Protect system via this method, make sure you've got the login credentials or reset them so you can head in and enable OnViv or RTSP at the very least, which in some cameras was actually the option you need to have to then add the OnViv option down the line. Equally, there were cameras like this one, the VZoom, a budget brand that I've not really heard of, and they and their camera was actually designed to go with an existing NVR. And although this camera does have um, uh, OnViv support built into it, if you have this camera within the existing NVR setup, it actually disables that. It hard locks out on Viv support on this camera. So buying this camera off the shelf for about $70 has on Viv support. If you get it within the NVR kit, it kind of has it in the back end, but it's disabled on the camera. Now, once I added a bunch of OnVid cameras to my Unified Protect setup there, it was really quick and easy to add them. But there was, again, further caveats, which I'm hoping and I am sure, at least to some extent or another, are going to be ironed out as this software and this feature comes out of beta. Number one, the level of control, management, and edge-style hardware utilization on these cameras is very, very, very limited at the moment. When I was looking through some of my Unified Protect cameras that I already had set up, I had the full gamut of control from edge AI to local-based AI services and being able to set a lot of the alerts, tailor a lot of the hardware at my disposal. Now, when it came to third-party cameras, it was a very different story. For example, this here is a pan tilt zoom outdoor camera from Rio Link. It's got 360 all the way around and all the way moving. It's even got optical zoom built in there. Unfortunately, I couldn't take advantage of any of that. It only allowed me to have a camera feed going out and all of the management of that feed was done on the Unified Protect server end. None of it was taken advantage of the camera's abilities and Although I could use a kind of digital zoom that was built into Unified Protect, I couldn't take advantage of the optical zoom on this system. That said, there were some surprising incidents, like this one with the Rio Link Duo 2. This is a dual lens camera from Rio Link, and this gives you 180 degrees visibility. And Unified Protect was able to take advantage of the full 180 view. During my testing, I was very close to it, so the dividing line down the middle got a bit weird. But had I deployed this outside, which unfortunately I can't do with my existing Unify setup and where I am, this would have worked. And it allowed me to not only have to go through that, not uh, to avoid the hassle that uh, third party NAS that would have required me to have two camera licenses for both of those lenses would have entailed, but not only did it pick up those two lenses, but there was no licensing issue to start with. But just keep in mind, again, if you're running a camera that has edge hardware, be it for pan tilt zoom, be it for AI based services, be it for an optical zoom, you're not really able to harness any of that currently. Just a quick update to this video. It's been a week since I first recorded this video and in that time, Unify have updated uh, Unify Protect 12 times. Little sub revision updates there with numerous bug fixes, numerous improvements and uh, kind of uh, tweaks to what I was utilizing a week ago. It still doesn't change too much about the course of this video, I will say. Um, I'm still seeing the frame rate there ever so slightly lower in the case of some cameras you can see the top left and uh, bottom right there are unified cameras and on the other side we're seeing those other unified cameras there but I'm definitely seeing a little bit more of a snappy response as you can see there at the top of the screen I am accessing this site remotely I'm not using the local area network I'm making sure to portal out and come in there but I will say it is definitely more responsive and they have done a whole bunch of tweaks and improvements to it listed here on notepad dock here but hopefully scrolling on screen now uh, on top of that i did play around with the mobile application and that in turn has seen improvements the way it's output in a lot of the cameras and i will say that there is in that one week of 12 different micro updates that have taken place on this before it reached the release candidate i'm really really happy with what they've done there Again, it's still not perfect. It's still very much a beta labs component, but uh, and I would say Unify Protect 5033 is pretty darn good. And I think it's gonna be good to get behind and at least play with there. But just keep in mind, again, beta labs. It's just this feature of OnViv that is still very much a beta lab addition. Now, 
I would not really recommend jumping on board with this yet until it is fully polished out. A lot of the feature set isn't there, and I, you know, I think Unify are going to be doing more with this, but right now your Unify um, Protect setup using third-party OnViv cameras doesn't really give you the large degree of control over these cameras like you get over their own products currently, but I do believe that is going to change. Another thing, the camera's behavior sometimes was slightly erratic with some of the uh, blackouts on screen when I was going through a multiple feeds. I had about six or seven cameras on screen. And sometimes the OnGo third party cameras in the main feed would black out or freeze. But when I went into individual cameras in the listing on the second tab there on uh, pr uh, Protect, I was able to see the full feed there. So there was definitely confliction internally with that support of camera that will no doubt be ironed out. Now, if you are someone that has upgraded and you do want to roll back you can do that by making your way into the control settings of your system on your unify in my case i was using a udm but you may be using a UNVR system go in and via the ssh terminal go in enable ssh temporarily you have to assign it a password and thanks to uh commenter user one user one um, who provided this link so you can hopefully see it there on screen a simple command that you can apply via putty and that will allow you to roll back protect on your system to an earlier version in case you're worried about stability but do keep in mind that taking advantage of ssh is very much a technical thing so one if you are going to do it make sure you disable it afterwards and two don't really do it if you don't really know what you are doing because as the warning that the system gives you goes if you do mess around with terminal and backend access on a server of any kind you can cause some serious damage but this has been a quick deep dive into the support of third-party cameras on Unify Protect, where it's at right now, and hopefully where it's going. When things are more established and this feature is out of beta, I look forward to comparing it against other surveillance brands. But right now, it feels a little unfair to do so. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic week.